Welcome back to Game Galaxy, and today we're gonna make a pie, a retro pie. This is going to be a step-by-step -step setup tutorial for those of you out there looking to build your own retro pie. For those of you wondering what a retro pie is or what Raspberry Pi is, be sure to check out my other video explaining what that is, but we're essentially going to be making our own tiny little emulation machine. The video is going to be broken up into five sections, and we're going to cover number one, all the elements you need to build your retro pie. Number two covers downloading the retro pie image and flashing it into the SD card. Number three, just general retro pie setup. Number four is configuring a few of the emulators, and number five will be fine-tuning our controllers to work with RetroPie. All of the components you'll need to build your own RetroPie, I'm gonna list one by one in the description down below. But there's also Raspberry Pi starter kits available on Amazon that have some of these things all together. When I built mine, it was cheaper to buy them one by one, but sometimes the prices might be cheaper to get a kit. But what you'll need is the actual Raspberry Pi 3 Model B motherboard, which lives right here a micro SD card, I suggest getting at least a 32 gigabyte one, and a nice case for your Raspberry Pi to sit into. This one right here that I'm using is the official Raspberry Pi 3 case uh, from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. I just think it's a nice sleek and it looks very cool and uh, has a little Raspberry logo there if you can see that. So it's cool. Uh, so that is just the core thing to get the system. You'll also, I would suggest getting a USB extension cable. This is just an extension cable that has, you know, the male end and the female end, so you can get some further distance for you if you're going to use USB controllers, like I do. And then get yourself the iBuffalo Classic USB gamepad. I've said this over and over again on my channel. If you know this, this is my favorite USB gamepad. I should be paid by iBuffalo with how much I push this. But uh, this is a great one. You can also use Bluetooth controllers with RetroPie. And uh, I'm not going to cover that because I have quite the collection of USB controllers and I just prefer to use USB controllers. I'm, I guess I'm weird, but um, yeah. And that is all you're going to need. You, oh, you will need a power supply for the Raspberry Pi. So that's something that does not come with the motherboard when you do. I suggest getting the 2.5 amp one from Canakit because it's just perfectly made for Raspberry Pi and will give you the maximum amount of power you'll need to run it. So once you've got everything ordered, head over to the RetroPie website where you can click on the Get RetroPie button. This will take you to a separate page where you can choose the image for the Raspberry Pi 2 and 3. Start the download and save it to your hard drive. Now I'm using a Mac computer, so I'll be using a free piece of software called Apple Pie Baker. If you're on Windows, I suggest using a program like Win32 Disk Imager. After you've downloaded the RetroPie image, make sure to connect your micro SD card to the computer. Once you open Apple Pie Baker, make sure your SD card is showing up in the left hand window, and then go over to the Restore Backup section and locate your image file that you downloaded from the RetroPie website and then go ahead and click restore backup and watch the progress bar go as it flashes to your SD card. Once the image is finished being flashed you can then eject it from your computer. So now that the Raspberry Pi is in its case and the micro SD card is where it needs to be now we just go ahead and hook this thing up. Now I don't know if it's just my TVs but I suggest plugging in your HDMI cable before plugging in your power or else it won't display in 1080p uh, quality. I don't know if it's that my TVs or that's just how Raspberry Pi is. So we're gonna go ahead and plug in the HDMI cable. We're gonna plug in our USB controller. And for the first time setting up, plug in a USB keyboard as well. I got a keyboard off to the right here. So now that I have my controller and keyboard and the HDMI hooked up, now I'm going to hook up the power. So let's just plug it in. Nice thing about these Raspberry Pis is once you give it power, it will turn on automatically. So there we go, I've just powered the Pi, and here we go. We can see, this is what you'll see the very first time when you start up your Retro Pi. I don't know if you can see well on the camera, but I'm noticing the picture is not filling the screen, and that bothers me. It's, I'm wondering why, why is that happening? And that's because we're gonna need to turn off overscan compensation once we get into the options here. So now we've loaded into Emulation Station, and you'll see right here that it detects my USB gamepad, and it's asking me to hold a button on my device to configure it. So I'm just gonna hold A, and it, it detects it. So here you just go through the prompts, which I'm gonna follow, up, down, left, right, start, select, 
A, B, X, Y, left shoulder and right shoulder. Now here there's more options, but I'm out of buttons since I'm just using a Super Nintendo style controller. So I'm just gonna hold a button I've already mapped uh, for the rest of these and it'll just skip on down to the next one. And here's a tip uh, as we go through this. When we set up all the controllers, which we'll talk about later, treat every controller like it's a Super Nintendo controller because the emulation station uh, kind of all the buttons are set up to be as if you're using a Super, Nin Super Nintendo controller. So here we go. When we first boot up, this is all we'll see here. Retro Pie. No emulators, no ROMs, no anything because obviously nothing's on there. <clears throat> so we're going to go ahead and click the A button and it'll launch us in to our menu here. And I am still not filling the screen here. So I'm going to go down to Raspberry Config right here. Uh, just to adjust some of the Raspberry Pi features itself. So once we load in here, the number one thing I'm going to do is go to Advanced Options, this Overscan section, and it asks me if I'd like to enable uh, compensation for displays with Overscan. Now we're using modern TVs, so I'm going to click No. Uh, you would want Overscan if you were using a CRT TV, CRT TV, so to just make sure nothing was cut off since the images used to get stretched a little bit. So once I've done that, I'm now going to click Expand File System. This will make sure that it's using the maximum amount of your SD card as possible. The RetroPie software should do that when you use Apple Pie Baker, but I just do this just to be sure. Once you do that, your partition has been resized and you need to reboot to see that happen. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, click Finish here. And it asks me right away if I want to reboot now. So obviously, I'm going to click yes. And I'm controlling this all with the keyboard right now. You can use the controller too, but we're going to use the keyboard later when we set this thing up on Wi-Fi. Now that we've disabled overscan compensation and done our reboot, you can see it's filling the screen now fully, which is wonderful. So now we want to get this thing set up on Wi-Fi so we can transfer our ROMs to it. So again, I'm going to go into the RetroPie menu. Go on down to... Wi-Fi. Once in here, I'm going to connect to my Wi-Fi network. I'm going to blur this stuff out just in case there's any insane hackers out there. I'm going to choose my thing and I'm going to type in my password using that USB using that USB uh, keyboard I've plugged into it. So we'll do that. Excellent. Right up here, it'll show you uh, what your current IP is and the network you're wirelessly connected to. So let's, I'm using the controller. You can also use the keyboard. I'm going to go down to exit and it'll take me back into emulation station here. There's multiple ways to get your ROMs loaded onto your Raspberry Pi, but I suggest using an FTP program, which I think is the easiest. I'm on Mac, so I'm going to be using CyberDuck. And if you're on Windows, I suggest using FileZilla. Now, one thing for Mac users, go ahead and look at my Mac screen here, is you will see in your finder window that there is RetroPie showing up here and you can click it and it's connecting as if it's a normal server uh, with ROMs and all that. And your temptation is going to be to open up your games folder and just drag games right into that, uh, you know, f folder. Like here's a thing. Here's a, you know, a Game Boy Advance ROMs and just drop it into GBA. The problem is do not do that because unlike, uh, like how Windows has thumbs.db, which is a hidden file, Macs, and I'm sure you've seen this on USB disks that you maybe have copied Mac files on and you put into a Windows computer, it will copy not only the ROM, but that invisible file which I think is used for the little thumbnail that you see on a Mac computer, .ink file. It'll show up in there as a, you know, the dot underscore and the same thing. And so you'll get double files of everything in your games list. It'll be very messy. Do not copy files using the finder. Listen to me and use an FTP program. So how do we do that? We're gonna go over to, now that we've connected our Raspberry Pi to our Wi-Fi, I'm gonna to go to show IP to see what my IP address is. And there it is on the screen. It shows me my IP. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over to my computer and open up a connection. Now here is the trick that a lot of people get confused about. When you're connecting to your Raspberry Pi, you need to use SFTP, not just normal FTP. So go ahead and make sure you choose SFTP. 
So once you see your IP address and type it in there to the server, the port is 22, because on SFTP, the port is always 22. The username is going to be Pi, P-I, and the passport is Raspberry, R-A-S-P-B-E-R-R-Y. That's standard for every Raspberry Pi. So go ahead and click connect, and I'm just gonna click yes, use my fingerprint always there. Now here I am, I'm inside of RetroPie. I'm gonna open this menu here, and then open the ROMs folder. Here you can see there's pre-made folders for all kinds of systems. We got, you know, Genesis and Sega 32X, Sega CD, Neo Geo, NES. So I'm gonna go over to my hard drive here and let's go ahead and pick some Genesis games because I love Sega Genesis. Let's pick uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. Let's see. Let's pick Sonic 2, wherever he is, okay. So all I have to do now that I've got this connection established is drag the ROM over to the Genesis folder and here it is, it'll transfer. Now there, I've done a successful transfer of one game. Now I'm gonna go ahead and quit out of this menu here. Go back to the main screen. Now I don't see any games here, right? Now that's because anytime you transfer files over, it's not gonna show up an emulation station. You're gonna to need to restart your Raspberry Pi. So I'm gonna press start, go down to quit, and then restart system. Really restart, yes. So now that I've successfully restarted, you see that Sega Mega Drive shows up as being one of the emulators I can choose from. And that's the thing. Most of the emulators are all built in, so you just have to move your ROMs over and then they'll show up in your playlist. So I'm gonna choose it, and right now I just have a list of Sonic 2. Now, the older systems like Genesis, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, all those things, they will work fresh out of the box without you doing anything and other setups. The only ones that'll need interesting setups are PlayStation 1, Neo Geo, and Dreamcast, even though Dreamcast doesn't really work that well on Raspberry Pi. And personally, I would not suggest using Raspberry Pi for Dreamcast. Right now, just play Dreamcast on Dreamcast. And that's what you need to ask yourself when you're setting up your RetroPie. Sure, you could do all these other things with it, and Raspberry Pi can do way more uh, you know, system than I'm gonna show you here, but you have to ask yourself, what is it that I want this for? For me personally, I wanted just a retro system that was able to clean up the clutter underneath my TV. And I wanted it to play systems like Atari 2600, uh, Master System, Sega Genesis, the original Nintendo, Super Nintendo, TurboGrafx-16, Neo Geo, PS1, and N64. That's all I want it for. That's more than I need. That's a lot of systems. But that's essentially what I want it for. In actual, like, retro games of the main systems uh, that were important to me. And you have to ask yourself what you want. So all I'd have to do, now that I see the game there, is go ahead and click load. And... Here I am, it is loaded. Bam, I'm playing. Now here's the thing, I'm playing a Sega Genesis game with a Super Nintendo controller. Now, you can do that, but I also have a USB Sega Genesis controller and I'll cover that later. But the controls will be A, B, and C. So there we go, here we are. We are playing Sonic 2, right here on a Raspberry Pi. And it was that simple, guys, just to throw on the ROM and set it up. So there's no rocket science. Don't let anybody fool you on the internet that it's hard to set up a RetroPie because it's not. But we're not done here because there's a little more things we want to do. So the emulation uh, is fantastic. And one of the things you can do here with the controller is hotkeys. Now, you can do save states and loading states. To save a state, you'll hold the select key and press the R1 key. And see, when I do that, you can see in the lower left uh, corner, it says save state to slot zero. So I'm gonna go ahead and play and move a little forward. And let's say I screw up, let me lose my shield here. Oh man, I didn't want to lose my shield. So to load, I'll hold the select button and press the L1 button and the left shoulder button and it loaded my state right there like that. You can have a bunch of states and the way to move behind them, uh, between them is by holding select and using the D-pad left or right. And you can see in the lower left, my, slave so my state slot is changing but uh, I don't even know how many you can have because I just usually use one or two. So I'm gonna load and play. Now to exit any game, you press start and select at the same time and it'll bring you back to the emulation station menu. Now, here's the thing about this, that it's not very pretty. 
it's just text and I, you, you may have seen uh, from my earlier video or other places on the internet that there's artwork and a different theme. You know, this one that comes with the emulation station and RetroPie is called Carbon and there are other themes you can do. And my personal favorite is Pixel. So the way to do that is to go into your RetroPie, go to File, uh, RetroPie Setup. I want to go to Configuration and Tools. And I'm going to scroll down to ES Themes. These actually download from repositories. So you are going to need to be connected to Wi-Fi before you choose to install these. So I'm going to go down and install Pixel because like I said, Pixel is my personal favorite. I have tried them all. Please go try all them all and see which works best for you. For me personally, I think Pixel is the most uh, and uh, best looking one in terms of how it divides the screen and brings in the box art. So we've installed that. I'm going to hit cancel. I'm also, now that I'm here, I'm going to go down to splash screen and I'm going to choose my splash screen from the RetroPie splash screens. And I like the RetroPie 2015 carbon video. It just, when you're first booting up the Pi, it'll do this nice cool video. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to cancel out of that, hit back, hit exit. Now I'm just going to go to, I'm going to press start, go to UI settings, theme set. It's on carbon right now. I'm going to change that to pixel and click back. Bam. I already, wow. Some of them will need to have you actually quit and restart emulation station for them to work. Pixel just happened to work, I guess. So here, this is the way pixel looks. I really like what it does, um, but I'm still not happy because Having just a bunch of games here looks gross. So how do we get the artwork? Well, I'll show you. You have to do it by using the built-in scraper that you can download with RetroPie, but you can't do it with Emulation Station running. So you need to have that USB keyboard still connected to your Pi and go ahead and press the F4 key and it's gonna quit and take you directly to the uh, DOS prompt here or command prompt, I guess we're in Linux. So type, I'm going to teach you some really basic Linux commands and this is how you're going to move around. But go ahead and type ls, that's for listing the files. Uh, here I see the folder, so I'm going to type cd, similar to DOS here, RetroPie setup, list the files again. And then I'm going to type sudo, I know it's, a, it's, it's more for super user do, so it should be sudo. I like saying sudo, like sudo chop. So we're going to type sudo ret, uh, period slash retro pi underscore setup dot sh. Don't ask me why you need the period and the slash, it just won't work without it. So now we're in the same setups that we've been seeing inside our emulation station, but now we can go down to the configuration and tools and go down to this thing that says scraper, which is scraper for emulation station by Steven Self. Go ahead and click that and it'll download and install the scraper that we need here. So we downloaded the scraper and here are the options for it once you load in. I am going to suggest that you go to thumbnails only, which is enabled by default, and go ahead and disable it. And what that means is when you disable it, it's going to give you the most highest quality picture. If you're somehow concerned about the space it will take up, if you've got thousands of ROMs, uh, then by all means use the thumbnail, but they might be, be a little pixely at times. So I like to disable it. Just know that if you've got like a thousands of ROMs like I do, uh, it will take up some space to host those pictures. So it might be like 400 megabytes or something like that. So keep that in mind. Uh, now, all we want to do is you can leave this the way it is. Obviously you want to save this step for when you've got all your ROMs transferred to the Pi, but we just have Sonic 2 for this demo. So I'm going to click scrape all systems. And here it goes, it's going to reach out to the databases and look for it. And you can see here that it's looking. And once you have a lot of ROMs, this will just run. So I advise just like setting it up and if you got a lot of ROMs, click it and just walk away and let it do its thing and go through. So after it's finished, it'll say ROMs have been scraped. That's great. I'm gonna hit cancel, back. And now I'm going to click perform reboot. Are you sure you want to reboot? Yes. So we've just loaded back into emulation station from our reboot after scraping our ROM. So I'm going to click into the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive section and check that out. And there is the official box art of Sonic the Hedgehog 2. 
and a little bit of if you use different themes, the different information will show up sometimes, like how many players, all that metadata has been scraped. So if you change your theme, you'll get that information. Personally, I just love how the pixel theme totally just sections off the screen in perfect, uh, nice little lines here with the ROMs here and the box art nice and big. Because honestly, when I'm scrolling through my games, I am looking at the text, but my eyes just go to that box art and I like the box art. So then again, I can do it just the same. So the only thing left to do is to fine tune our controllers and set up our certain emulators that need BIOS files. So right now, since I'm here and talking about uh, you know, Sega Genesis games, let's talk about using other controllers. Since I set up this iBuffalo one as my main controller, I'm gonna leave it plugged in because that's what the Pi recognizes as control. I'm gonna unplug my keyboard because I don't need that anymore. Here is the Hyperkin GN6 USB controller. I like to, when I play Sega Genesis, use a Sega Genesis style controller. So what I'm gonna do is plug that into the second port. Now, just because I plugged into the port, nothing's working. So I'm gonna go back to my iBuffalo, click start, go down to configure input, and then I'm gonna not push any button on that anymore. Now it says that it, can it detects two game pads right there. So now I can hold down my button for this and see how it saw it as USB game pad. I'm gonna go up, down, left, right, start. For the select button, I'm gonna use the mode button that's up here on the upper right. So I'll click mode. Now, remember I said that every controller should be treated as a Super Nintendo controller. When I was playing Sega earlier, the setup was actually A, B, C. So Y was A, B was luckily B, and A was C. So what I want to do is, when it says A, I'm going to press C. B will be B, X, and don't be afraid to refer back to a Super Nintendo controller if you're confused of what should be what. X, I'm going to press the Y button on the Genesis controller, and for the Y button, I'll press A. Left shoulder will be the X button, and right shoulder will be the Z button. And now we can just go ahead and hold C on our controller because we're out of buttons and we'll get down to the bottom. I know it's confusing, but this is what uh, you will need to make the controller work. So let's load into the game because there's something very important you'll need to set up inside uh, the emulator when it's running. And that's to make use of a six button Genesis controller. I'm sorry, you have to do it from the first player controller and I still have this one plugged in. So I'm gonna press select and X. We'll bring up the RetroArch emulation thing here. So I wanna go down to quick menu, options. Here we go. Input device one and two. Right now it's set on three button pad. We want those to say six button pad. So I'm just gonna to go to them and change them to the six button pad. And then I will press B for back and go to resume. If I was using a fighting game, all three, all six buttons will work like they're supposed to. The good thing about RetroPie is that it once you've set up a controller, it will remember the buttons for it. Now luckily, these two controllers show up as different devices. This shows up as X8 axis controller USB or something like that. And this is just a regular old generic USB gamepad. So there's other gamepads I have that show up as USB generic gamepads. So I can't really use those with the RetroPie because the buttons won't work. I can remap them, but then next time I plug this in, it won't work. But I only use three controllers with my RetroPie, and that's the Super Nintendo style one, the Sega Genesis one, and then if I'm gonna be playing, Playsta playing PlayStation, I will plug in this one here. And this is, I will have this in the description. It is an awesome PlayStation style controller. I think it's called ZD USB uh, you know, gamepad. They also make them in Microsoft styles. But the great thing about this one, this, if you plug it into a computer, or even the Raspberry Pi here, it registers as using the Microsoft Xbox 360 controller. So once again, this will differentiate it from my other controllers. So I'm gonna plug this in, and now I'm gonna configure this one. So remember, even though I'm using a PlayStation style controller, treat it as if it's a Super Nintendo controller. So here I've got A, X, Y, and B, like a Microsoft layout. So for B, I'm gonna, or sorry, let's do up, down, left, right, start, select. For A, I want it to match the Super Nintendo. So I'm gonna click A. For A will be B. X is gonna be the Y. And 
y will be x. I know it sounds weird, but when you set it up as if it's a Super Nintendo, when I load a PlayStation game, it'll then be correct with x, square, circle, and triangle. It's just the way it works. So left shoulder, right shoulder, left trigger is basically L2 and uh, R2. When you get to left thumb, that's for clicking it in, L3. Right thumb is R3. Left analog up, down, left. Ooh, that was weird. I think it worked though. <laughs> up, down, left, and right. So I will click OK there. So if you want to do PlayStation 1 emulation, you're going to need the PlayStation 1 BIOS files. You can flash this from your own hardware or find it for yourself. I cannot tell you where to get this because technically the BIOS files are a legal gray area, but go ahead and look at my uh, computer screen. What you want is this file here, the scph1001.bin. And what you do is go over to your FTP program and underneath the RetroPie, you'll have the BIOS folder. I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. Of course, there's nothing there and I'm gonna drag this into the BIOS folder. Bam, it's been copied in there. Now PS1 will load. Now for Neo Geo, there's a little bit of a trick. You need to have a BIOS for Neo Geo. It's called Neo Geo.zip, and this not only has to go into the BIOS folder, but you also need to copy that same Neo Geo.zip into your Neo Geo folder. So once again, for Neo Geo, I've got it both in the actual BIOS folder and in the Neo Geo folder itself as well. RetroPie is only gonna look for the original version one BIOS of Sega CD. Now I grew up with a Model 2 Sega CD, so I was used to seeing that intro. So what I did was I got a BIOS for the second Sega CD and renamed the file to match this file name right here, and then I did that. So this one, you don't have to do anything special with, you can put it in the BIOS folder. Once you've done that, then you can go ahead and load up your PlayStation 1 games or Sega CD games or Neo Geo games with ease. The last thing I wanna leave you with is setting your controller to work properly with PlayStation 1 games. You might have a controller like this one where you load in and the D-pad moves your character just fine, but the analog stick isn't responding. What you wanna do is press select and uh, the, where the triangle button would be if you set up your controller correctly. Go into quick menu, all the way down to controls, change on, on default, this says user one as a retro pad. Move that to retro pad with analog, and then for user one, it usually says none, change that to left analog. And do that for your user two or user three, however many players you want. After doing that, make sure you click save core remap file. Once you do that, then you can go back and click resume. If you don't do that save core remap file, it won't remember it the next time you do it. So pay attention to when I load a PlayStation 1 game here. I'm gonna go ahead and load Tekken 3. When I load it, you'll see core remap file loaded and then it loads my controller, so it remembers that. Thanks so much for joining me for this RetroPie setup video. If this video has helped you create your very own RetroPie, be sure to leave a like on the video, share it around, and as always, take care and enjoy RetroPie.